love. When I asked the first storyteller what she thought the secret to happiness might be, she answered, the secret to happiness is the correct safety procedure. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miata Edoga. <laughs> I don't like danger. I never have. Um, growing up, I was always the sensible girl. I worked hard in school. I got good grades. I was on the student council. I was never one to take risks. Um, I never really did anything wrong. In fact, in high school, I was voted the person most likely to succeed. <laughs> so everyone was stunned when I moved to Hollywood, met this British guy named Adam, and married him exactly three months later. <laughs> what did I really know about him? My friends wondered, and since my parents would have lost it, and again, I avoid danger, I simply didn't tell them. <laughs> so Adam and I had been married for um, a little less than a year, and his mom came out to visit us from England, and we decided that we were going to take her on a weekend trip to Joshua Tree with his brother, his sister-in-law, and their two little girls, Annie and Eliza. So Joshua Tree is this national park. It's east of Los Angeles, and it's supposed to be beautiful and um, relaxing, you know, a chance to escape from the hustle and noise and pollution of the city. But the thing is that being around Adam's mother in the beginning made me really, really nervous. She was so British. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, so we head out for the day and we are um, hiking and it's very hot and the terrain is kind of tricky, you know, it's dusty and there are rocks everywhere. And Adam's mother actually suffers from severe rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm starting to realize that maybe Joshua Tree wasn't the best place that we could have taken her. So I'm hanging back a bit. I'm trying to be the good daughter-in-law and, you know, make conversation. But while I'm distracted by the danger of Adam's mother, you know, the fact that I might say something wrong or do something to offend her. Adam is enjoying all of the beauty and wonder and adventure of Joshua Tree. So up ahead of us, Adam spies what I'm going to call a cliff, okay? It's, <laughs> it's like a straight wall, maybe 20, 30 feet high, and at the top of it, there's this ledge. And here's where one of the major differences between Adam and I comes up. I see a cliff, and I think, huh, it's a cliff, right? He sees a cliff, and he thinks, huh, I should climb that. <laughs> so we catch up to him, and he's examining the cliff, and He's trying to figure out the best way up, and I demur a bit. I say, I don't know, love, it's awfully high. <laughs> because I can see how something that seems amazing can become treacherous in seconds. But when I point out danger, Adam, he, his reaction is to say, it's fine right? Don't worry. And he shows me why. He says, look at all the handholds and the footholds. It's not a problem. I can do this. And he does. And he actually makes it look easy. He 
gets up there really fast. I have to admit, it's a little bit sexy watching my husband <laughs> scale mountains. And he's up there in like no time at all. He's looking down at us. He's posing for a few pictures. So then I say, um, okay, love, I think you should come down now. I'm admittedly still a little bit nervous. And I think we should start thinking about going back to the hotel. So he says, great, I'm on my way. So he walks to one side of the ledge and kind of looks. No, then he walks to the other side of the ledge, studies it, maybe, nope. Walks back to the same side where he started. So, huh, this is curious. Everything okay, love? I call up. Oh yeah, fine. I'm just figuring out the best way down. So we watch him some more and he paces some more. And this is when I start to get that really sick feeling in the pit of my stomach because it occurs to me that he could slip. And once that little window of fear opens, it's easy for full-fledged panic to escape. I start seeing like a movie in front of me that my husband is going to die here. Like, I'm gonna be widowed before my parents even know that I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> I look up at him, I say, what's wrong? And he says, nothing. I. It's a little trickier than I thought, and he, he sits down and he actually turns over, you know, on his stomach and he dangles his legs over, looking for a foothold, but no, he gets back up again, and at this point his mother is pacing back and forth in front of the wall, idiot, 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 she's <laughs> muttering, and I'd say it's under her breath, but we can all hear her, so that's not true. I'm trying really hard to stay calm, and my little niece, adorable little blondie, just six years old, she grabs my hand and she tries to pull me away, and I say, no, Annie, I think, I think we should stay. And she says, why? She looks at me, do you want to see him fall? <laughs> Lord, even the six-year-old knows that he's going to fall. So I have to take charge, and I walk up to, and I put my hand out, I touch the wall like that somehow connects me to him, and I look up, and I say, love, do you need help? And he looks down at me, he takes a deep breath, and he says yes. And the moment that he admits that he's in trouble, that terrifies me, okay? Like, my hands are shaking, my heart is beating, I am sweating, and fear is about to completely overwhelm me. But then I remember I am the person who is most likely to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> so I take off running down the path, and I run for like five minutes before I come across this woman. And she is tough right? Like short, blonde, spiky hair. <laughs> and she's, you know, she's wearing jeans and she's got a flannel shirt and she's got rope over her shoulder. And she is leading what appears to be a troop of like seven to 10 year old Boy Scouts. <laughs> and all I can see is this rope. And I say to her, can you help? I said, my husband, he climbed up a cliff and he got stuck. And she said, what? <laughs> Climbing without gear? <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> and we go racing back up the path. It's me, I'm being followed by this woman and her troop of Boy Scouts. And we get back to my husband who's still stuck up on the ledge. And this woman has absolutely no mercy. She sits her Boy Scouts down in front of the wall and she proceeds to give a rather lengthy lecture on the perils of climbing without the proper preparation. And at this point, the crowd has gathered. 
People are starting to stare. They are taking pictures. So she selects her star pupil. He's like the tallest kid. He's probably like nine years old. And at this point, my mother-in-law is stoic. I mean, she's got her arms crossed. She is reassured by the fact that her son is about to be taught a lesson being rescued by a 10-year-old boy. And the woman harnesses up this child, right? They work up this pulley system. She helps the kid climb up and then with her strict direction, this boy harnesses up my husband and they lower him safely to the ground. My husband looks sheepish. My mother-in-law looks British. <laughs> And I have never felt so relieved in my life. So this cements our relationship. It's our first adventure. I feel solid enough to tell my parents that we're married. We go on to have two children and we will soon celebrate 19 years oh. of marriage. <laughs> and I think it's really true when people say that opposites work well together because even though there are so many ways that Adam and I are so, so different, I still honestly feel as blessed today as I did the day that I married him. And when people ask me, you know, how do you do it? Why do you think it works so well? I honestly remember that story about my husband getting stuck up a cliff because it reminds me who Adam and I are to each other. It reminds me of all the ways that he gives me courage so that I don't let my fears rule my life. It reminds me that no matter how terrified I am, I have to let him take risks. That I hope he always knows that I'm there to help if he needs it and that I just have to try really, really hard to never let him fall. Oh. <laughs>